Yesterday, I announced the feature tracker application. If you go to my blog, sivalabs.in, and you can see this article announcing feature tracker application. Basically, as a uh, Java developer advocate, I had to frequently create a lot of applications for demonstration purposes, like various IntelliJ features or some Spring Boot new features and all that. So I have been building small applications and it, it become a little bit of overhead to keep track of which application is for what kind of a demonstration. So I thought, okay, why not build a uh, non-trivial application where I can showcase uh, various kind of a features using the same application. And not only that, it can also be helpful for people to learn, okay, while building a non-trivial application, there can be many integrations that are tricky and uh, you, you can focus on implementing and learning advanced use cases. So I thought of, okay, let's build this feature tracker application, not only for learning purposes, there should be some motivation for me to do this. So the motivation is, how about building something where uh, we can track of, okay, what people are looking for in a product? Let's say in my case, what kind of features people are looking for in IntelliJ IDEA? We can create some uh, feature request and then people can vote for them and then uh, uh, they can discuss about, okay, I want this kind of a use case um, supported by IntelliJ IDEA or I want this feature to be available. So. Uh, we can gather the feedback from people and then we can vote for the uh, feature request and then maybe we uh, the product development team can look at this and then uh, okay people are liking these features so it's a win-win situation for all kinds of people as a developer advocate i use it for various demonstration purposes and people who want to learn building non-trivial application can learn various technologies and for the product teams they can uh, look at this and then understand what kind of a features people are looking for so that is the whole motivation for building this feature track application now I'm going to walk you through how you can set up the feature tracker application locally and then start development. So if you go to feature tracker, uh, this is a GitHub organization and all the repositories are there in this organization. So right now there are around 12. Um, so the question is, where should I get started? So the best thing is if you go to feature tracker on GitHub, there is a link to this. Uh, where you can see some documentation, basic uh, description about the project and what kind of services we already have and how to get started. Now let's follow this getting started instructions and uh, let's try to run the application locally. So first things first, we are using key clock as a OAuth authorization server and there is uh, both front-end channels and back-end channels for login and uh, token uh, authentication and validation. So to have that consistent URL, I am adding this uh, local IP address 127.0.0.1 and key clock in the etc host file. So if I go to my... Uh, terminal here if I cat etc host you can see I have this key clock added as a uh, host here and uh, we need to run a bunch of commands for uh, building our applications and then creating a docker images for it and then uh, running the docker compose commands to completely spin up all the microservices and their dependent services and everything so uh, we can run a simple shell uh, script or manually individual commands, but that's very tedious. So I am using a task file utility where you can uh, create uh, various commands and then you can group them as a task and then you can run them simply. So we are going to use that task file utility and you can simply install that uh, using either brew install or you can use go install. Um, so once you install, you can verify this one. So with that, um, if you are not interested in local development, you just want to use the application and see how it looks like, you can simply clone this repository and then cd into this repository and just uh, invoke this task start, which is going to pull all the Docker images from Docker Hub and then run all the services. And then you can access the application at this URL, localhost 4200. This is the URL for Angular UI, which talks to backend microservices. 
So that's that's it you need to do just to uh, see the application running locally. But if you want to go ahead and develop the application and you want to look at the code, you can do like this. You can clone all these repositories. So basically we have a API gateway, which is nothing but Spring Cloud Gateway, which acts as the gateway for all the backend microservices. And we have a config server for um, centralizing the configuration management. And then there are microservices like feature service, notification service, user service, and the front end single page application, feature tracker, Angular. And this repository, Docker Infra, it has all the Docker Compose manifest files where you can run all the services. And as I mentioned here, you can go ahead and clone these repositories and then um, open your IntelliJ idea and then uh, add all of these projects or Recently, uh, IntelliJ IDEA provides this workspaces support where you can have a workspace and you can have a very different type of projects, not only one type of projects, like you can have Maven projects, you can have Gradle projects, you can have uh, single page applications. So it supports opening multiple types of applications in the same workspace. And uh, we can go ahead and create a workspace manually and then you can add all these projects to the workspace. That's one way to do it. But there is even much simpler way. Like uh, there is a FT workspace repository. If you go to that repository, there is only uh, this dot idea folder. Inside there is jb-workspace.xml file. So in this one, we have this various projects configuration where we are saying, okay, there is a project called feature service and it should be stored in this directory. And what is the Git repository URL? So we have configured all the microservices and other infrastructure component repositories here. We have feature service, API gateway, notification service, user service, and a few others. So once we have this file inside this .git idea, all we need to do to clone all these repositories is simply you can, uh, I have this uh, Chrome extension here. I can directly click on this, which is going to open uh, IntelliJ IDEA and try to clone this repository. Or if you don't have this, you can copy this URL and then try to clone it. Now I'm going to click on this, which is going to trigger this cloning process. Now, if I try to clone, So it is going to look at all the repositories list in that JB workspace.xml file and ask me if I want to check out all these projects. Very simple, right? So I'll say, okay, go ahead and check out all of them. So here you can see it is uh, cloning all those repositories one by one. And it is going to take a few seconds. Okay, so as you can see, we have uh, some Maven based projects and uh, we have Angular application. We have a, a Gradle based project. Here you can see in Gradle tool window, you can see the notification service. Right now, this is the only uh, service that is using Gradle. And you can see in Maven tool window, there are a few Maven uh, based service. So inside the same workspace, you can have different type of projects open. And usually this is how we do uh, when we are working with a microservice based part, right? You might work with a different type of services, sometimes on the front end, sometimes on the back end. So uh, with the workspace, it is very easy to group them, all of them into one service. And uh, once you have this, you can just load or unload uh, some of the project. Maybe right now you are not working on, let's say I'm currently not working on Angular application. So I can unload that. Still that reference is there, but your IDE is not burdened with all the keeping track of all the changes and everything in this particular repository. But later, if you want to work on that, you can simply again click on load. It is going to re-enable that one. So it is that simple. So you can manually create a repository and then clone all of the uh, microservices and other repositories. And then you can uh, add projects and then you can choose uh, where the projects are and then you can add also. But this 
uh, feature of you can have one repository and then you can keep this XML file with all the repositories uh, projects defined makes it very easy to set up the project. You can simply clone and it's going to take care of cloning all the dependency uh, repositories. Very handy. Now, now that we have all the code and where should you start? Let's go back to the uh, documentation and see. Okay, once we clone, uh, we can go to uh, Docker Infra. Okay, let's open the terminal and here we are already in Docker Infra. Here you can see there is a task file. Let's open the task file. Here you can see uh, there are uh, tasks that we are defining here, build, start infra, start, stop infra, restart infra, uh, docker pull. So there are various things. Usually if you want to do something, you may have to do multiple, uh, you may have to run multiple commands, but here it's kind of a shortcut where I can simply say docker start and it's going to run all of this. So kind of a very handy. So now what we have, uh, we define inside this Docker Infra, there is infra.ml, which uh, defines all the infra components like uh, feature tracker service uses PostgreSQL DB. And there is Kafka, which are used for publishing events and then consuming. And then we have key cloud for what authorization. So all these components are defined in infra and there is apps where we have our Angular application and then config server, API gateway, and the microservices, uh, feature service, uh, notification service, user service, and all that. So we have these two files. Now, simply, uh, there is a, a shell script, which uh, CD into each of those repositories and then uh, build Docker images using uh, Spring Boot uh, build image uh, feature. And finally, here we are using um, Docker command to build the uh, Docker image for Angular application. So a simple handy uh, shell script. So if you want to run uh, locally, you can simply uh, call this a dev start command, which is going to build all the services and stop if any of the containers are running. And then you are running uh, first infra components, uh, sleep for five seconds, and then again, start all the uh, application containers. So you can do that. So let's do this and then see how it goes. Task and dev start. Now all the services, all the containers are started. Now let's take a look at, so here, let me, uh, I'm using this portainer to see all the containers. Here you can see all the containers uh, started. Now I'm going to start with localhost 4200. So this is the uh, home page and I am not yet logged in. And as a guest user, I can see, okay, uh, this is the dashboard right now. Uh, there is nothing much. We can see all the products that are offered and you can click on any product. And then here you can see what are all the features in that product and is it released or which, rele which release uh, this feature is part of and who uh, actually worked on this particular feature. So like that, uh, you can see all the feature list and also you can go to releases tab here. You can see what are all the releases we have. And if you click on that, it will take you to release details uh, screen. So right now there isn't much. Uh, currently it is in draft mode. Draft mode is nothing but work in progress. And these are all the features that are part of this release. And you can filter, uh, let's say I want to filter on this. I can apply that, it's going to only show. So uh, similarly, you can filter on title or status and all that. So you can select, okay, I want to see only new and this is it. So uh, you can uh, show clear all the filters and like that you can filter on various columns. Now, 
these are the uh, things that are available as a guest user. Now I'm going to log in here. So I can say the credentials are uh, Siva and Siva1234. And we have, I logged in as a Siva uh, and you can see my name here. Now, if I go to product list here, you can see this add feature button uh, visible for admin users only. And if I click on it, I can add new feature my uh, or something like that. Add support for creating Spring Boot apps using yeah, something. And okay, let's add that same thing. Right now, I haven't assigned which release it is going to be part of or who is going to work on this. I'll simply create this and it got created. Now you can see this is in a new uh, state. Now I want to edit this and uh, make it part of uh, 25.2 and I'll assign it to Andrew. And he started working on this one. I can update that here you can see. So like that, you can add features and then you make them part of uh, some release. So now if you go to uh, 2025.2, you can see this is part of this one. So you can do that. So the initial version of uh, feature tracker is released with basic integrations with various services and uh, core services like API gateway, config server and uh, key clock configuration. So all the core things are in place. Now, next, uh, I'll focus on building the uh, actual features. And uh, if you are interested to contribute, you are most welcome. You can first try out to run the application locally and then explore how uh, different features are implemented in different services. And uh, if you have any new ideas or something like that, you can go ahead and add in discussions. So here I just added this first announcement here. Now, if you want to express some uh, ideas or anything, you can come here and comment on this one. So let's build some application and learn together and use it together. I hope this is very useful and I would like you to join me and uh, be part of development this application. You can uh, share your ideas or you can even contribute uh, implementing some of the features and uh, let's all work on this together. I hope this is useful. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.